Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> so, so, so. This is, this is your boy, <laughs> Martins here. N not as in <laughs> speaking, but as in, uh, the current world's strongest man. Uh, this, this guy has just inspired the fuck out of me. Uh, for as long as I've been following him. And, and the crew that, that helps him out. Uh, it's just been very inspiring and, and helping me to, uh, ignite my own inner fire and engage uh, my body and bearing witness to what happens as I engage the body. Realizing the correlations between body and mind whenever you work one out like the other is must be worked out because of the connection there. It's just how it works. So I don't, you probably can't tell on here, but uh, I, I just wanted to get, use this as, as the image here because, because he's, he's sweating and he's been lifting, uh, doing, uh, I think they call them log lifts with, uh, I don't know, 300 something pounds and just pressing, pressing it up from his uh, chest up and, uh, it's something to, to, to witness. But this, this is going to be about several different things. It's going to be about my experiences, uh, engaging the body, uh, certain inspirations I've had, certain concepts I've had, um, and by no means does this mean that this is how it is with, with what I say. It means this is uh, my insights and take them for what you will. Uh, take what you can from them, uh, learn from them, and just uh, let the rest fall away. That that doesn't serve you in the moment. <clears throat> so, whenever we have things in the body that are stagnant and are blockages that, that may take the form of what uh, the medical field has convinced most people of these terminologies and that these things are this and that's that's what it means and so that you need this treatment to treat these things. Well no, these things happen naturally because the body has its own way of blocking something off to protect the rest of the body from that. And also, it blocks it off and encapsulates it so that it can be brought to the surface and released. So this is a big part of like why I, I'm showing this guy here and he's sweating is because whenever you work your body, you're inevitably working the mind and inevitably working out your karma if you want to view it that way, your built up karma, you can either burn that shit out through fasting or, and, you can also work it out and bring it up to the surface. You can get that shit out. And if, uh, if you find that you don't have enough energy to really work out all that much, you can, you can do things like go into saunas. But the number one thing I'm getting at here is uh, you have to engage your skin, engage the machinations of your lymphatic system and your uh, 
the systems in your body that excrete and the elimination systems. So your, your innards, your organs need to be relatively healthy before you even think about going into a sauna or it's going to be a, a very humbling experience for you. So the sauna is going to get the skin working, get the blood flow coming to the surface, get get things out that need to get out. But ultimately, the sauna is just a tool. Um, it's just a reminder of what your body can do naturally. You don't need a sauna. You don't need a fucking sauna. Anything and everything can be a sauna. You can create your own sauna just from very sim simplistic things. You can just wrap yourself up in a whole bunch of stuff and uh, eventually your body's going to start to sweat. And if you want to utilize movements with that or certain kinds of cardio, uh, you're really going to fucking sweat. There's your sauna. But essentially, what the sauna is reminding you of is what happens whenever you work out, whenever you work the body. And what's more important, uh, more beneficial than just utilizing a sauna is choosing the workout to where you get that kind of a intense sweat. But in the workout, if you do some kind of a cardio workout, it, you're, you're working things out of you like, that are a little bit deeper, whereas with the sauna, it's just going to be more of the outer layers, the, the fatty tissue, the lymphatics, um, but with, with working out and getting that sweat on that way, you're, you're getting shit out of your, well, depending on how hard you go. Out of muscle tissue, even out of uh, some of the some of the skeletal tissue, even getting getting down deeper and deeper to your core skeletal structure. I mean to say. So my experiences, I've had. Um, and I, I like in these uh, little nodules uh, that, that that happen, and, and they they come about, um, and, and you know, they they form uh, in the skin. Uh, they get caught in that little fatty layer and in the lymphatics, and they need that extra little oomph, that extra little press. So. Whenever I really uh, was able to witness this is whenever I was arm wrestling and I was uh, exerting a lot of energy, a lot of blood flow pressure. And uh, one of these little nodules, it was enough pressure for it to, to, to come out. And it was a, it was a decent sized one um, following some of my lymph lymphatic system, uh, following my veins up in... Uh, my left arm, and I had been using other forms, let's say like uh, massage, or what I what I also highly recommend is is gua sha. If you don't know what that is, uh, get into that because you're not really going to understand and understand. What, how much your skin is collecting on a daily basis until you really get into gua sha and start to really dig deep and get the gunk out. And it will, once, well, first of all, like people are so clogged up that the gua sha isn't going to work at first. But then uh, the more you engage the sweats, 
engage your skin, getting things out, engage the lymphatics. Then you can start pulling stuff out. And when that happens, uh, it will just keep coming and coming out. And, and it is quite fucking alarming, and it should be, because it's, it's a constant reminder uh, of how dirty our environments are. And then it leads you down, you know, a rabbit hole of, well, how did it get this way? What, why, what is causing all this, uh, dirt and gunk to go into my skin? And I'm not gonna go into that. Like, everyone has to have that path for themselves to realize that. What is going on? But this, this deep level gua sha is, is going to show you just how much gunk is stuck inside of your body, your, your lymphatic system. It's wanting to come out. So how I utilize gua sha now is I, uh, I work out, I sweat, and then I do the gua sha in, in, in a shower. So my body already has the sweat, and it's already uh, ready for me to run a certain tool, whatever that tool is for you. You can you can utilize different kinds of uh, sharpness. And, if, and at first, you 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 want to use more of a blunt object, and then you can kind of use an object that has more of an edge, and then you can really start to like. It's not, you don't really, I mean, you may get uh, marks on your skin, but those go away. They're more superficial, and it's bringing blood flow up to the surface of the skin. So, yeah, I will uh, have, have a nice sweat going, and then do my gua sha, and get all the shit, and all the gunk, as much as I can, and, and really... I do it until the point of uh, my skin tells me, like, yeah, we're good here. <laughs> like, you've taken enough uh, layers off and gotten enough out that uh, any more is just going to start uh, causing causing too much damage. And then, what I do after the gua sha is I, I have my own uh, concoction of, of different kind of oils and uh, essential oils as well. Uh, as, as well as carrier oils, uh, pumpkin seed oil, amala, uh, castor, and then just just a whole uh, a whole bunch of different oils, and then I will put that into a mixture of uh, my own orin, and that is what I put over the skin for to rejuvenate and, and soak in. And if you have ever uh, experimented with putting orin on the skin uh you'll quickly realize that your skin soaks that shit up super fucking quick so quick it, it's it's like what the fuck but so whenever you uh mix the, the, the good good the good oils in with the orin that also gets uh, soaked in a little bit more expediently So just experiment. Uh, find out what works. If you're using essential oils, you don't want to use too much. Of course, <laughs> it'll dry the skin out too much. So after that, I do a uh, cold, cold water on there to close it up, and that's kind of like my my gua sha go to. So that's one uh, really good way to. Start getting shit out of your body. You start allowing it to come up to the surface, and so they it can it can be expelled. But you need to also realize, whenever things are coming up to the surface, it's micro and macro. It's symbolic of what we're going through and what we've held on to. The little aspects of ourselves and pieces that we've held on to. The little pieces of pain and trauma that we've held on to. The body holds on to it and it encapsulates it so that. It protects the rest of the body and the rest of the system. 
the thing is that we forgot how to expel this stuff. So whenever we are working with the gua sha, with the uh, deep breathing techniques, the deep level breath work, that is also a very uh, intense and advanced, only because most people aren't doing it, level of detoxification. As we are doing this, we are also going inwards, even though we're helping things come out, we're also taking our awareness inwards to why it got there in the first place. And this is forcing us to engage the pain, why it was there, why it was needed. The body doesn't, do, the body doesn't go out of whack and do things, it doesn't, it doesn't do things, uh, it doesn't make sense. It only doesn't make sense to people that doesn't understand how the body works. Your body is a perfected system. The only imperfection is what you've been taught to believe about your body. So with with the gua sha and, and with the uh, the things inside of us that maybe we were told are there, maybe we we think that we need uh, those things not to be there. But um, try try to flip the script and, and try to realize what your body is doing for you. And it all has a purpose. It's there for a reason. So once you see see it for what it is, and you start to engage in the process of releasing it, it will find its way to the surface and be released. Sometimes, sometimes we need that little extra push, and this is why I encourage people to engage the body work out exercise it doesn't matter what kind of mentality you have about working out engage the body whenever you get these that blood pumping whenever you get that flow going you're going to inevitably come back to the inner workings of the things that you need to, to deal with the, the pain that maybe you have uh, been dodging or running away from for so long that you become comfortably numb to it well whenever you start really working out really engaging really doing deep level uh energetics and we'll get into like shamanics even uh you you bring light to these areas that, that have had been forgotten and then you're able to truly heal them because you feel into them. And yes, it may be painful, even even physically, even on the physical level. Like you may have to go through a, a fair bit of physical pain, but you can transmute that pain, and uh, you can choose to see it as a process of feeling into something instead of getting caught up on the outer the exoterics of the pain and, and getting caught up in the ego of it and ow I'm in pain oh my gosh I need to do something about this or oh my gosh I have this I have been told I have that it's there for a reason and ultimately it was placed there by you by the things that you have been through a lot of us have been through some very traumatic shit, so this isn't easy stuff. I, even though I'm just I'm saying this stuff in words, this is not easy. This is easier said than done, for sure. This is not easy shit. Whenever you get down deep, really down deep, into expelling 
your your pains and your blockages. And we're all learning as we go. I mean, I by no means am I <laughs> a master at anything or I offer things up for people's contemplation and maybe they gain something from that. Maybe not. Take what take what you can, leave leave the rest. for another time. So also a huge part in this is another 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 <laughs> once again another shout out to the Mayan Jin where uh, I'm constantly being reminded of uh, the pressures pressurizing the system pressurizing the organs especially whenever you really get into fasting it, you start to uh realize what's happening whenever we put something in the system um, yes we're getting certain essence essences from 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 things but for the most part how people usually engage and eat uh, it's just pressurizing the system and also it's feeding something inside them that uh, I wouldn't say it shouldn't be there, but it's there for a reason as well. And uh, it has a little bit of control o o over why they consume what they do. So if you want to get those things out of you that may be having a subtle or not so subtle control over you, you need to realize why they were there in the first place. Why, why you allowed them there. How they were allowed to get in there in the first place and then also uh, these things they they kind of have a mind of their own and as far as uh, they get comfortable in their home so even whenever you just start to do the work of cleaning yourself it's only uh, you're only working on so many layers, but just like the the Russian dolls, like it's layer upon layer upon layer of dolls until you get to that original core essence of that the original doll, original energy awareness, which is where the uh, blockages the if you want to call it parasite it is going towards as well and it's fine it's found its way uh, through some layers and it's made its home it's become very comfortable within that so let's say like the uh, the parasite or whatever it may be is on a certain layer and you're starting from the layer way out here and you're like okay I'm doing work and I'm getting to a, a place but you're still not quite at the layer of where that thing is comfortable at so it takes a fair bit of work and awareness and discipline to continue to engage and we may re reach points where we think that uh, we've gotten to a place where okay I'm clean I'm clear <sighs> I've done this so many times that I, I, I can say like you're, you're not You've gotten you've gotten to a certain threshold, and you experience a certain level of clarity. But very quickly, the uh, the layers will start to spin again and collect, and you will find yourself back where you were because you took that little period of okay I'm good and like and also you know it, it, it's a process we do what we can uh, we shed layers as much as we're willing to dive down deep into 
Some people go balls to the wall, full throttle, all the way into it. Some people do a little bit at a time. Everyone has their own ways that they engage for them. There's no right or wrong here. And they're just... There's just a... Uh, an isness to it. These things exist where they do, and until you get to them, whatever it may be, whatever kind of a blockage it is, until you finally do the work to where you get down to that layer, that kind of a release, you you will know. It, it will be a kind of release that uh, I would say like stays with you in memory, but it's uh, you. Sh whenever you finally shed like certain layers, uh, you, you basically feel like a different person because of the clarity that happens and the levity that happens. I also want to throw out, uh, you can utilize things like acupuncture, and that's awesome, acupuncture is pretty cool, but uh, any of these outside uh, healing things um, are always only going to help you to a point, and then it's always going to fall back upon you to do the work for yourself. So I've uh, experienced this stuff with Acupuncture with with Reiki with uh, shamanics with uh, entheogens, plant spirit medicines, with quite a few different things, and I've experienced uh, all kinds of crazy shit. Uh, but it always comes back to. What are you willing to do for yourself? How deep are you willing to go inside? And you gotta take yourself there. You you gotta learn from the, these experiences that you had, the, the healing uh, experiences from say, uh, a healer or a shaman or a certain practitioner, learn from them. But uh, where we can get caught up is that We, we rely on something outside of ourselves. We have to learn from the healers and become our own healer. And this is why, even though I am a technical, certified Reiki master, I, uh, I don't do Reiki on people that often because uh, it has a lot of... Uh, I have to talk, to, talk with them a lot beforehand so that they understand that what is happening with them um, they are going to experience things and experience a relief and a release and yes it may be very painful uh, it may be very pleasurable but it's only going to last for a time and they have to do the things that they need to do, to do for them to heal themselves so this is why I don't go out and heal people um, that often anymore is because I need to make sure that they understand understand that they have to heal themselves they have to be willing to put in the work the work to dive into themselves instead of going outside going to find a quote-unquote doctor which is just a uh, indoctrinated person that doesn't know what they're doing. Yes, there are some holistic doctors and, and whatnot that, that can help you, but if, if your quote-unquote doctor or, or healer isn't getting to the main point, which is you have to take it upon yourself to heal yourself. Otherwise, 
this shit is going to keep on recycling. You're going to keep on experiencing these things until you finally fucking get it. And it's the same with shamanics. I, I have uh, experienced uh, many levels of people's releases, and every time it happens, like, ah. Uh, I try to instill within them that nothing outside of them is, is really happening. They're, they're seeing a projected image of what's happening within them. And they have to continue to go inside and not get caught up on the outside if they really truly want to heal themselves. So with shamanics and also Reiki, you can you can combine those two and have uh, profound experiences with yourself and also with healing people. Uh, um, intense. Uh, you you can call them like magnetic shifts, or even it kind of feels like gravitational shifts that happen uh, in the hands as well as in the body, uh, in the temples, uh, with people. Just different areas of the body as well. Any area. But uh, what, what can also come come about is, uh, and especially it's dependent upon uh, what you can see. As in like, uh, you can say with your third eye or, or your first eye or whatever. But... Uh, the more you engage with Reiki and shamanics and stuff like this, uh, the, the more you will see certain things. So uh, things come out of people's bodies that can take the form of uh, certain smells, uh, certain uh, colors, certain emanations, as in like a, a smoke. You can even see like dark gray matter, dark gray smoke coming out of people because of what they're releasing. Uh, the toxic, the toxicity within them that's releasing. And this will be very transformative for the person. But, I recommend to all you healers out there, to all you shamans and Reiki practitioners, be very subtle. Be very subtle in what you do. Because if you go too deep and you, you bring out too much in someone, yes, you can you can view it as, oh, I'm healing them. I... I healed them greatly. And and yes, like on the short term this is what's happening, but on the long term, realize what's happening to the person. They get cleared, they're able to see same things and experience things that they weren't able to before. They don't know how to handle that. They have not done the work for themselves yet to be able to handle that level of transmission and frequency. The level of beingness. And so whenever their cycle comes back around. And it repeats for them. To learn. From their previous mistakes. They're not. They don't have the. Groundwork yet. To be able to do that. And so because of that. This next come around for them. Is going to be. Crazy extreme. And they're going to go. Even deeper down. Uh, a level of pain and um, dis-ease than they were before they even saw you a as a healer. They're going to be worse off because you did not help them heal themselves. So if you want to help someone heal themselves... You have to make it clear to them that they are doing the work, that they have to do the work. You may, as a healer, you may provide temporary relief, but they have to do their own understandings to find out the true causalities of what is going on within them. And a lot of us uh, healers have experienced uh, to a degree where we heal someone's body completely, but then we learn the hard way of 
the spirit, their spirit has to want to live and it has to want to heal. Otherwise, we just gave them the fast track to immense pain that they were not ready to uh, shed light on yet. They hadn't done the work yet to be able to transmute what they needed to and heal for themselves. And so a lot of times, whenever a healer experiences that, they start to question what they are doing and a lot of times they, they give up their practice altogether because they don't want to ever do that to another person. So whenever I'm doing shamanics or reiki or whatever it may be with someone, I'm speaking a lot of times uh, past their egoic self as in their persona personified self and I'm speaking directly with their body with their soul essence and their spirit and and this is why most people just instantly pass out they relax all the way down so that we can have that kind of communion and uh, Outwardly, they're not going to really remember much, but inwardly, they're going to feel a great deal. And eventually, those feelings will come up uh, into their mind, and they'll be able to realize what they are feeling, what they need to do, the pathways that they need to do for themselves, to truly heal themselves. We're all our, our own healers. <sighs> Recognize where the blockages are and why they are there. Recognize the separation that has happened with you and, and with nature. So a lot of times, if we just finally allow ourselves to go barefoot out into the nature to listen to, to all the life all the birds, all the songs, all the energies, all those sounds are going to enliven your soul. All those uh, essences and the smells are going to bring your spirit to life. It's going to re-enliven your body. It's going to kickstart your body to start to heal itself on a deeper level. So I recommend people to do long walks or even jogs on barefoot. Your soul's on the soil and pay pay attention to the things around you. Pay attention to the herbs, to to the flowers, to the plant life that you are drawn to. Your 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 mind, your body is going to naturally be drawn to certain types of shapes, certain types, it's called um, bioacoustic resonance. You're going to naturally be drawn to what you need. The question is, are you able to get out of your fucking mind to where you realize, oh, I keep seeing this one plant over and over again on my walks. Research that plant, or even, even better, just, just start ingesting it, but also research it. So that your mind can catch up to what is happening with the body and the spirit. That connection is is very much instantaneous and on a on a speed that your mind is it, it's, it's going to take time for your mind to catch up to that. For your mind to realize the magic that's happening, the healing that's happening by just going out in nature and allowing yourself to freely ingest what you're attracted to. Listen to what your body is telling you it needs. Go to those kinds of herbs and flowers and trees and plant life. Stones even. And your body will just do its thing as 
as it was designed and meant to do. Go out in nature, release your mind back into <laughs> your natural state. Allow the inspiration from the life all around you to remind you of the life inside and inside of all of us. Allow it to aid you and into feeling into your pain whatever you need to feel into so that you can finally release what you've been holding on to and a lot of times we don't realize just how much we hold on to till we finally get that release and the clarity that comes afterwards I love you guys, and I want to help you in realizing <laughs> just how magical each and every one of you are, and I don't want to heal you, <laughs> even though I, I could send my ray out and heal your physical vessel, but that's not going to heal the heart of the matter, which is what you are doing to your physical vessel, what you need to do to it, to feel it again, to re-enliven it, to create your own pathways, to remember what is really going on within and without. You are all so much stronger than what you know, than what you realize. Sometimes you'll catch glimpses of it, and you'll be reminded of it through, through others, especially through children. Look into the eyes of children, and they will reflect back to you what you are. 100%. <laughs> Connect with the raw and the real and just feel into it and swim. Surf's up. <laughs>